Welcome to this course on color theory for beginners. This is a series of lessons created to help get you going in the often challenging and complex world of color theory. Color is one of these topics that most of us have a broad understanding of, but it's not until we start wanting to put paint down onto canvas that we realize just how tricky and overwhelming the topic can be. So these lessons have been designed in a way to give you this complex information in small yet manageable pieces. Pieces. Each lesson will contain a lecture followed by a demonstration and will be capped off with an assignment for you to complete. We start off with a general overview of what colour and colour harmony is in lesson one before giving each major component its own focus. Lesson two is all about value, the relationship between light and shadow, the most important component that gives our art structural integrity. This is followed up by lesson three with Hugh, where we talk and debunk some of the myths associated with the color wheel. Next is lesson four. It's all about saturation here, the link between hue and value and how vibrant or neutralized we wish to make our colors. And we finish it all off with color temperature, which is all about how we perceive colors. In total, there's nearly four and a half hours worth of color theory content here. If you're not 100% sure if this is quite what you're looking for, here's a sneak peek at what's on offer. These colors are impossible to create, which means the three of them have nothing in common. Blue sits on the cool side, red sits on the warm side, and yellow is neutral, sitting somewhere in between the two temperatures. So nothing about these three colors relate to each other. But when we start moving things around on our hue, value, and saturation scales, we can start to get these primaries that have nothing in common to start relating more and more to each other. Before we start worrying about the rest of our values, hue, and saturation, we have to construct where our light is coming from and where our shadows are being formed. So painting in a little rough sketch like this just helps to get the ball rolling. As we said in the lecture, when we have complementary colors next to each other, they are going to be fighting for the viewer's attention because they're on opposite ends of the color spectrum. They have nothing in common. So if we put in this really hideously green color right now for this background, that background is now going to start fighting for our attention with the red in our platonic shape. What we can say then is that each time there's a directional change away from the light, we get closer and closer towards shadow. The front of the box here is one value capturing most of the light. The top is another value capturing the middle tones. And the side plane is capturing the shadow, which is our darkest value. A high key painting is a painting that leans towards being a predominantly light composition, whilst a low key painting is one that leans towards a predominantly darker composition. A medium key is one that is roughly balanced between the two. So that's going to help differentiate these two areas. If we didn't have that gradation happening in our sky, then there's a good chance that our mountains and our sky will just simply merge into each other. We've got full control over the situation. Simple light and shadow shapes, simple value ranges within those shapes. When we sort of break it down in that way, all of a sudden it starts to become a lot less daunting. The truth is a little more nuanced than that. Red, blue and yellow certainly can, at least in theory, make a certain type of color wheel that is more or less true to that belief. But in reality, it's a very big stretch to say that we can get the full spectrum of color using those three primaries alone. Because yellow starts a lot higher on the value scale, it's going to be affected by the addition of black to a much greater degree than what either blue or red will. If we start adding black into our red or our blue, we're not going to feel as if there's much of a color change that's going to happen. The one on the left has color values that are very consistent with our black and white sketch. The other one has color values which are very inconsistent with that sketch. Comparing the two images, we can kind of tell one of these just doesn't feel quite right. And then after that, we have to start asking ourselves, well, in which direction along the hue scale around that color wheel is that yellow starting to shift? Are we starting to shift towards the cooler yellow greens or are we starting to shift towards the warmer yellow oranges? In fact, they're actually helping to make this color look far more vibrant than it is. If we take a look at the same image, but it's nothing but purely saturated colors, 
Take note of how much more chaotic this image now looks. If nature greys and neutralizes with color, then our black and white version here is never going to quite look right. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I'll just add in black when I need to get to the really dark areas. But what happens if we choose not to work with black at all? When we start to get those muddy colors that lose all their character, then it's usually because we haven't really thought about what it is we are mixing. So I always highly recommend if you're working digitally to to create your colors, at least at first, when you start to get a feel for things, then you can start using the color picker or the color sliders. We may very well get a shadow side on an object that looks a lot cooler than the warm light hitting it, but that doesn't mean our starting point for our shadows is literally going to be a cooler color. If our beach ball here is red, then we are going to get a far more intense and fiery looking red beach ball in our sunset image because of the orange light that's now hitting it. Our midday sun image looks less intense because we've got the influence of the sky hitting down. A good exercise is to actually mix our two primaries of cools and warms, mix them together and see what the results are that we get. Mix our cool red and our warm yellow, our warm red and our cool yellow. As we said earlier, a lot of this is going to be subjective as well. So none of us are going to see color in the same way. How I'm seeing things right now is that there's a lot more of a cooler green color in this area. So that's a small sample of what to expect in this series. It's now available for purchase via the Gumroad link in the description. So if you're looking to get a better understanding of color or have always felt a bit overwhelmed by the topic, then this is definitely going to be the series of classes for you. Let's get painting.